I came uh, to Canada in uh, 1974 and I didn't have the luxury to have this kind of groups at that point of time because we didn't have people who formed these kind of groups at that point of time. So you are really, really very lucky that you have this kind of network where you can actually talk to each other and share your ideas and bring in speakers uh, who can uh, you know, talk to you about these things. But I'm not sure the uh, the landscape has changed that much. Like when I came in 1974, I came, uh, I had a master's degree at Deepak Sat, uh, and uh, before I came in here, I worked in uh, the bank in India. And uh, when I came, you know, the logical choice for me was to apply for a job in the bank. I had a good job in the bank uh, in India. So I applied everywhere, I didn't get it, even an interview, let alone. So if I go and tell them that I had worked, as a bank officer in India, so you know I had, I know a little bit about banking, they will tell me the job I'm applying for is too junior fair for me. If I tell them I had a master's degree, they said, you are overqualified. So either, uh, you know, they wouldn't recognize, the, it, it, my qualification wouldn't get recognized or skills wouldn't get recognized. So the things from that point of view maybe haven't changed much, but what has changed in my mind is this. It's, the support and network that you can really uh, get now that we didn't have before. In 74, if I remember correctly, I think uh, it was hard to find a South Asian family in, uh, in Toronto. Maybe two or three people who were really married and their family. Everybody was single like us, right? So we all just <coughs> get together at a certain place, but you know, the best job you could ever get was and go and work in the factory and so on. So we all did that. And uh, so did I. You know, I worked in the factory for a while. But what I did was, I said, okay, my qualification is not being recognized, but I have a basic qualification. My experience is not recognized, but I can get there. So I, so I tried to improve my qualification while working at the same time. So I started on my CMA program. And, and uh, so it took me four or five years to complete it. But uh, at the same time, what it did really help me was, uh, it helped me to get into my own field. And sometimes, you know, I say, uh, I say to myself, I have enough. I have been lucky in a way, uh, you know, the, uh, as soon as I started, uh, working on my qualification uh, and I actually got a break almost a year after. And uh, this is how the break came in. You know, this is why I say sometimes uh, it has been a little bit of a luck place, a chance that as well. Uh, I applied for a job at the junior most job in accounting that you can find. It's accounting work. And uh, if somebody had gone on a maternity leave, right? So I got into that job, I applied for that job and you know, they gave me that job. When I got in there, so what they did, they organized the department in a way, everybody else moved up, so I got a lot of the, the, the junior most job. But the person who they moved up into the next supervisor, <coughs> after two, three weeks, he said he doesn't want to do the job. Right? But I was doing the CMA, so the supervisor came to me and he said, uh, do you want to try at that job? I said, yeah, I will try at that job. I have nothing to lose, right? So you can try at that job. So I tried at the job. I was fine. So within six months, I became the supervisor of that department. Right? So it helped me to that extent. But with my luck, you know, the, the lady who went there on maternity leave, uh, uh, you know, she actually had some problems, and so she came back early. But then it kept me going because they realized that you know I was doing a good job, they kept me going. But I tell you, you know, once I was in my field, it didn't take me very long to move up from that job. From starting as almost a very junior job and moving up to be, become the vice president and the executive vice president of a major uh, international corporation, it took me 10 years. Right? So if you really work hard, you have a good work ethics, and you can break. <coughs> you, know, you can move up. So don't, don't give up. This is not about giving up. 
you know, your qualification will get recognized, your experience will get recognized, all you need is actually entry into the door. So that is what is really important. So even if you are being offered a low job to start with, with your qualification, with your credentials, you can move up. And the things have changed a lot since then. In the banking sector, if you look around now, we have vice president, executive vice president, chair, vice chairman of the board, almost in every major bank. And these people achieved that in less than 20 years. How many of you know Sabi Marwaha? He is the vice chairman of the Scotia Bank. You know, his, his and my uh, actually career more or less fact, we became vice president at the same time, executive vice president at the same time and so on, but he stayed with the banks. He is the vice chairman. He is the second senior most officer in the bank. Less than 20 years. He did his master's from India. Bank of Monty Health has the same thing. Royal Bank has the same thing. I think we've got three or four vice presidents in the Royal Bank and senior vice president of the Royal Bank, even in charge of the human resources. Is, a, is an immigrant. So the things have changed a lot. So there's a lot of support and network that you can now get that we couldn't get at that point of time. And the other thing I want to talk to you about is a little bit about the business. Going back to 1974, you couldn't find a single business. I think the only thing you could find, uh, I'm talking about the South Asians, for the grocery store, the travel agency, that's all you could find. But now, the largest real estate company, largest real estate landlord for the federal government is an immigrant. Right? Isn't that worth maybe four hundred million dollars or maybe a billion dollars, right? So he did he was he did, I mean, you know, his story is worth telling. He used to be the current manager in a bank, then he got into one business, got into the second business, got into the third business. Now he became, uh, you know, he owns the largest, he, he actually the major shareholder for a major golf company and the largest, uh, uh, you know, the landlord for the, uh, for the federal government. So the things, you know, things do happen. So the, the one thing I want to say is, you know, these kind of uh, groups are important. And the other is, you know, use all your contacts that you can find with your friends, the family, anybody you meet. It's no hard. No, is you know, give them your resume, give them your card, ask them, you know, how can uh, they be of any help to you. And, uh, and you know, somewhere somebody uh, is going to realize that you have done really well and then they, they, they need your kind of services.